All right, what is going on, my lovely people of the world? Welcome to the E3 version of Nate Talks, where I talk about a very small portion of what happened at E3 because I haven't pay been paying terribly close attention. <laughs> it's largely thanks to the fact that the more involved that gaming companies get with the internet, the more widespread various gaming things become on the internet, the less surprise there is inherent in everything. Like, was there... I legitimately am curious if there was anything at E3 that surprised you. Not necessarily by means of like, oh, wow, that was super high quality. I didn't expect it to look that good. Not that kind of thing, but strictly like, holy shit, I had no idea this thing existed, but I'm so hype for it. Like, I think Hideo Kojima's little, whatever the hell it's called, that nonsense name. Did I actually, did I write it down? I might not have written it down. I think I just put down Hideo Kojima. No, that's all I wrote down. Kojima confuses the hell out of me. <laughs> that's all. I can't even remember what it was, but I just remember it being uh, another title that, like, makes no real sense, tells you nothing about what the game could potentially be, about what's going on. It's just sound, it's just, like, two words that sound cool. And that's like the summation of the reasoning behind the title at least that we can glean from now but obviously nobody knows anything about this game there was no like you know gameplay shown it was very mystical very much supposed to be kind of like confusing but something that makes you look at it and be like oh that's interesting and draws you in and makes you interested that was the entire point of it but that being said like so many games were games that have been shown off at previous E3s and I think that's another big thing that continues to go wrong in the industry is that it's like the moment something is at its conception stage developers want to talk about it they want to hype it up they want people to get excited for it and then four years later they're like no no this is a really you know games are a hard thing to do obviously like everybody knows that it's just you know the annualization of certain series makes it kind of seem like well why is it taking you so long even though you kind of have to understand most annualized series or shit moving on um but yeah so you have you know these get so many games how many fucking e3s has last guardian been at for instance um and so a lot of the time there's just no surprise inherent because you're seeing a game that you had for instance exactly what's going on with kojima's game you get this announcement trailer that means nothing tells you nothing basically only exists to show you that it exists and that's all that it is and so then next year or two years from now now they actually have a game in like almost alpha stages or in the alpha stage and they can actually show you a little bit of something but it's still nowhere near a complete game it's still gonna be a very small very very minute amount of gameplay and information because it's still not ready to be shown to a large degree and then you get to the next year now it's like all right now we're here for the third time and here's the real shit this game will come out like you know this holiday season or some shit like that and that now you finally actually see a real game and if video game companies would just keep shit hush hush and wait until that final moment to say Look at this mind-blowing shit we've been working on for the past three years. Piss yourself from excitement, motherfuckers, I'm out! And they just walk off the stage. That would be so much goddamn better than five billion Peter Molly News coming up on stage and making promises they can't keep, being overhyped for their games, and then they realize they have budgetary constraints, time constraints, their producers on their asses over everything, the board of directors is on their asses over everything, wondering where all that money's going to, and they need that game out now, motherfuckers. Sonic. <laughs> Y'all want to know what's wrong with every Sonic game? It gets rushed out because the fucking board of directors want their stock to go up. They want to make some goddamn money, so put the game out the door. We don't care if it's only had two hours in quality testing. Get it on the shelves. And you just, it's very, very difficult to match up to the initial hype before you actually start developing stuff and realizing, like, oh, we're not talented enough to follow through on this. We don't have the money to follow through on this. We don't have the time to follow through on this. Whatever the reasoning is, it winds up hurting you. Look at shit like Watch Dogs. They offered you the moon. And they went to a fucking ice cream truck. Got a little blue icicle. Icicle. 
got you a little blue popsicle that was in the shape of the moon and said, here you go, motherfuckers, we promised you the moon, there it is. That's what they did. It wasn't a bad game. Sure as hell was not a revolutionary game. Sure as hell was not a good game. It was a game. That is how you can summarize Watch Dogs. It was an adequate game. But they promised the fucking sun and stars that it was going to blow your mind and be the next coming of Jesus Christ all in one and it was none of it and so the gaming community shit all over them appropriately and that's why I say it's the Peter Molyneux syndrome do you fucking remember Fable? you can plant a seed come back hours later and it will have started to grow hell no you're going to be able to watch blades of grass grow in real time. Hell no. This is the original Xbox. You got to wait until 2075 for virtual reality to actually be a thing and not just a headset. You want to see that shit back up. So I think that is a huge problem for the gaming industry in general right now. Just the simple fact that everybody is so consumed by their own hype and that they want everybody else to be so hyped up they do it incorrectly they do it too much they do it too early and the game suffers whether it's because expectations are simply built too high and there's really nothing that can meet those expectations whatever it is shit goes wrong and people need to understand like this whole trying to make a holiday out of every single video game's release is just not going to work and you need to dial it back a bit look at you i mean i'll talk actually ubisoft is the first one i'm gonna talk no never mind ubisoft is not the first one i'm gonna talk about i watched the microsoft showing the ubisoft showing and the sony showing i did not watch anything else i didn't watch nintendo stuff because uh i am literally just sitting here waiting for a nintendo price drop for a wii u price drop that's it I'm not going to buy a Wii U at $300, that's ridiculous. I can buy an Xbox One for $300 and it's a significantly more powerful machine with a significantly more diverse catalog of games. Now granted, you want to get into exclusives, that is an argument to be had, but I have never in my life particularly cared about Nintendo exclusives. I'm not a Mario dude. I'm not a Zelda dude. I don't know why. I can't explain it to you, but I have tried to play numerous Zeldas in my lifetime, and I've just never been able to get into them. I don't really enjoy platformers in general. Um, so I, I can't, you know, there's just a lot of the first party stuff that Nintendo is known for does not jive with my particular brand of gaming in general. So that's, you know, a large reason why I didn't tune into Nintendo is because, you know, everybody's like, holy shit, brand new Legend of Zelda! Ah, sky is falling! And I'm just over here like, cool. <laughs> That's great. Pokemon, please? I care about the handheld offerings of Nintendo. Very much so. They always, they generally, I mean, obviously they own the handheld market. Pure and simple. The Vita didn't go anywhere. The Vita has gone so far into nowhere that they didn't even mention it in their entire E3. Uh, Sony didn't even mention it in their entire E3 presentation. The Vita was nowhere it wasn't like hey man we understand the vita didn't really catch on but check out these games that are coming out for it check out the beautiful odin sphere less here life repress here whatever the fuck that subtitle is uh look at this beautiful ass game from vanillaware that just came out shit still coming out for it it's still somewhat useful we're announcing a 90 percent price decrease on proprietary memory cards so they're actually affordable maybe the vita would actually sell i'm not here to talk about that i'm here to talk about microsoft then ubisoft then sony and is that it that's it so i'm not here to like i said it's not encompassing a huge amount of what's going on microsoft so like right up until the end microsoft had me going a little bit i was interested in an xbox one for a moment scale bound we happy few uh just to kind of scale bound is the dragon game from platinum games now the problem is platinum games has been dropping the ball hard recently like obviously bayonetta was a fantastic action game i haven't been able to play bayonetta 2 but from everything that i heard from you know reviewers everywhere etc etc it was one of the best action games they've ever played it got universally positive uh feedback on it 
and that's one of the reasons why I want a Wii U is so I can play that damn game. Um, but their recent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game wasn't that good. I've heard divisive opinions regarding that Transformers game that came before it. I played Legend of Korra, and that was a very dull, incredibly repetitive game that just, there wasn't really anything good going for it. Actually, I, sh I take that back. It looked really good initially, right up until the point that you realize you're going to be fighting the same three enemies just palette swapped 20 different ways for the entirety of the game. That was some bullshit. Um, so yeah, I just... I don't know, Platinum Games has not really been doing it of late, and so Scalebound kind of worries me because of that. And from what they showed off, it looked kind of slow. The main character felt like a Dante ripoff again. Uh, I don't know, it seemed like they were kind of trying to do a merging of Monster Hunter and Devil May Cry. And it seemed like it was a little bit too slow and cumbersome and a little bit just, eh to really be to really scratch that action game itch that people kind of expect from platinum games who knows you know obviously we gotta wait for it to come out that was what like an eight minute video or some shit like that obviously that's not gonna be indicative of a perfect product but generally in on a stage like e3 a company is gonna want to show off its best so if that's the best they can offer is showing you just shooting a bow and arrow at these glowing purple pods on top of this gigantic enemy and that's the best you have to offer for the main stage of E3, there might be some problems there. And so that's kind of where I'm coming from, where I say, like, I'm not really sold on it, and I've kind of lost a little bit of faith in Platinum Games recently. So we'll see when it comes out, but that We Happy Few thing, one of the biggest things that I think games try very hard to do but fail at is instill a certain atmosphere within, is... Whether it's a creepy vibe or a happy vibe or, you know, whatever they're trying to do, they try to make you feel something. And like I said, I feel like a lot of games try very hard, you know, making things creepy, but then they rely too much on jump scares and shit like that for it to actually be creepy. It's just those brief moments like, oh shit, and then it's all back to normal and you're not really scared of anything until that next jump scare comes out and hits you. We Happy Few actually creeped me out from the outset you could tell something was fucked up you could tell that not all was right in this little happy office going on obviously it you know helped when he's you know trying to take these pills and shit um but you could tell you know like something was off something was on uh something was not right and i wanted to know what it was it interested me it really drew me in and be like okay what's gonna happen next what kind of fucked up stuff is i mean maybe it's just kind of telling of my own fucked up state of mind that i'm like okay how far are they going to take this and what creepiness is around the next corner that sort of shit like that doing that properly that's what the original bioshock did and what every single bioshock game afterward failed to capture that same feeling that's not the same feeling necessarily but at least a similar feeling but the original Bioshock had that. And so that's what originally when I was watching that, um, I think it's a previously announced game. Like people already knew about it. I never did. That was my first exposure to that game. And that is exactly what I was feeling. I was like, this could be a new Bioshock for all I know. And that is high praise because even though Bioshock 2 wasn't the best, even though Bioshock Infinite had its problems, the original Bioshock was one of very few games in the last generation of gaming that I would truly say is worthy of being called a masterpiece. And so when you're comparing something like that in your own head, obviously you're looking at it in a positive light. And so that game has very much got me interested, more so than any other individual game that was shown in all of these and all of this stuff. We Happy Few caught me the most and has me the most interested in it and is actually also the most memorable. I can remember damn near the entire thing those fucking creepy clown faces with smiling at you the rat the pills that bit where he's walking past the window and that kid gets injected like i can basically rem play through the entire thing in my mind and even though i like to think i have a pretty damn good memory having something that's kind of just this random trailer of something i never knew about beforehand stick with me that hard it's a good thing it's a beautiful thing and so like that 
I'm interested, and I hope that comes out on Steam, because part of me wants to buy an Xbox One, but I'll get into the rest of it in a bit, of why I don't. Um, but yeah, Dead Rising 4 looked fucking awesome. Uh, sea of Thieves, despite the fact that they were just using rip-off, let's play type of people that were not interesting or funny or engaging or entertaining in any way, sorry, uh, it's, it looks, it looks really cool, it looks really interesting, and if, if they pull that concept off properly, that could be a really damn good game, and then Halo Wars 2, I loved the original Halo Wars, like, I, I'm, I've never really been hugely into the Halo main games, just because I'm not hugely into shooters in general, but Halo Wars, that tactical stuff, I'm all up in that business, I loved the original game, I, lo I think out of all the Halo games that are available, I put the most time into Halo Wars. I really enjoy that. So for Halo Wars 2 to be coming, that surprised me. I did not see that at all. Um, so that's really cool. And so like I said, that kind of has me thinking like, yo, maybe I want to hop in on this Xbox One S shit. Like $299 is not a bad price at all. I feel bad for all the people that hopped in on the deals of the price drop to $299 of the uh, original Xbox One model only to be shown that you're going to have a brand new upgraded one at the same price point. But then they ended their show by saying there was going to be another more powerful Xbox coming out within like, I think they said holiday season 2017. So it's like, okay. You're asking me to buy this $300 machine that isn't out yet. I don't know. I can't. I didn't write down when it actually comes out. But you're asking me to buy this $300 machine that'll be coming out sometime soon, only for it to be outdated within about a year? No, thank you. <laughs> I feel like they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot with that business plan. But we'll see how it goes. I mean, they're not exactly winning the console war to begin with initially. Um, so for them to kind of do that to announce two new versions of the same console in the same E3 just it feels like somebody not very savvy in regards to business is running the decisions that led to that um and so again that has me sitting here thinking like originally I was watching all this stuff and being like oh whatever Xbox Microsoft blah who cares and then I'm getting more and more interested and I'm seeing these games that I actually really want to play and I'm thinking about, all right, maybe this actually might be worth it. And then coming holiday 2017, this brand new Xbox that will render the Xbox you just purchased completely obsolete. Spend $300 first, please. Uh, okay, no thank you. I'll wait, I'll wait to see what happens because you don't want to end up with a console that is literally obsolete, that... Because this one is stated to have far more processing power to it than the Xbox Ones that are, will be of the Xbox One S, the Xbox Ones that are already available. And so there are going to be games that can be met, used on this new, whatever they call it, the Scorpio or whatever, that will be playable on that, but the other previous versions of the console will not have the power required to run them. And so now you may just have a brick sitting there that is basically exists as like a backwards catalog kind of a deal you can't play anything new but at least you can play the games that led up to the release of the scorpio right yay i just i don't know we'll see how it goes obviously that's just pure speculation at this point but i don't know like i said they had me interested in buying an xbox one right up until the point that they announced a newer fancier version of the newer fancier version just is stupid to me um so anyway ubisoft let me just read this right here. Is Ubisoft everything wrong with gaming? Their conference legitimately felt like one of those bad attempts to create the most memorable Super Bowl commercial by just doing random shit over and over. And I don't know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But for me, it certainly doesn't work. That entire time of that initial, you know, Just Dance 2017 or whatever exactly it was called, uh, the showcase for that, I was like, this has got to be the most pitiful attempt to look like cool and interesting that I have ever seen a video game company do please make it stop and I, I'm not gonna just hop right into Sony's uh, conference and just immediately you know discard everything that happened with Ubisoft but you see Ubisoft come out with this fucking stupid 
random dance thing with all these stupid random characters to a queen. Now, granted, to a queen song, which is fantastic. I mean, come on, it's queen. But, uh, yeah. It was not good. It was not a good look. It was very awkward. It was very weird. And then Aisha Tyler didn't really... I like I like Aisha Tyler. I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, Lana is my chick in Archer. I think she's fairly okay and unobtrusive in Whose Line Is It Anyway. And when she does talk, she's... Gen I mean, you know... She's a comedian that is not a master of her craft. So she's going to... Sometimes she's going to be funny. Sometimes she's going to miss the mark. And you just got to understand that you can't be too angered by a comedian missing their mark because they got to learn somehow. Um, and so, you know, there are a lot of people that just like, if they don't like, if they don't love it, they immediately rip into it. And so I saw a lot of Aisha Tyler hate, and I think it's fairly undeserved. Like I said, she says some things that are just kind of like, come on, you didn't, that's, you should have known better than that. But you don't need to dwell on it and act like she's Hitler for it. <laughs> like it's, it's really, I don't know. Anyway, she didn't help it. She made it a little bit more awkward. Then you have Sony coming out to a fucking full symphonic orchestra playing a song which I is I assume will be a, a a part of the new God of War game. Classy as fuck. Dude walks out in a suit, looking fantastic, looking professional, introduces the game and walks off the stage and lets everything happen. You just see the difference in mindsets there and Sony is how shit should happen. Ubisoft is everything that's just like, come on, man, we're not all eight years old here. <laughs> we're better than that. You should be better than that. Um, but anyway, that was followed by one of the worst uh, presentations I've ever seen. South Park was the only good thing. In my mind, South Park was the only good thing about it. And I actually wrote that down. It's a little bit further down, I think. Here we go. I think there's a problem when a South Park game is the most hype thing you have going for you. Not to say it's bad, uh, but all of these games, all of these concepts that they have that they're playing outside of South Park should be fantastic and look amazing. And yet the one that's most fully fleshed out, conceptualized, evolved from its uh, first game to the second game is the one that has the most dick jokes in it. Again, I am not shitting on South Park in any way, shape, or form. That is what you should do with a video game. That is what you should do with a video game sequel. They did it right. And yet, it's South Park. The most immature dudes in any room, in any given room, are going to be the creators of South Park. That's not a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. They have gotten rich as a hell off of being the most immature dudes in the room. Kudos to them. And yet they can tell that their game, whoever, I don't, not, I don't even know if it's them. I don't even know if they're just strictly associated with the script and they don't have any other input with the game. If it's just the people developing the game that are amazing developers and Ubisoft needs to just put them on every goddamn game they have. But that new, that new South Park game? is the one that is actually has evolved has looks interesting sounds interesting everything about it is what you should want as a game developer going on for it and it's just weird that like i said it's this game that is mostly composed of dick jokes sex jokes fart jokes shit jokes the most immature thing in the room is the one that has received the most maturation from its prequel to its sequel. Makes no goddamn sense. And you have all of these serious ass games going on. What's it? Did I even write it down? I may, Oh, For Honor? Still looks like shit. Every other game they showed still looks like shit. What was the other one? Ghost Recon. Holy. Now, granted, Ghost Recon probably didn't look as bad as I'm associating it in my mind. Thanks to the actors they hired to talk a scripted, to voice over a scripted script of what was happening on screen, and they never shut up. That was problem number one is that these motherfuckers just never shut up. Problem number two is that it took me a while to understand this wasn't actual dialogue happening in the game, these were just actors pretending they were in like a Skype call or something like that, talking over headsets and communicating what they're doing with each other. 
And so I was watching that for the first, like, 50% of it, thinking, like, soldiers don't act like this. Soldiers don't talk like this. Soldiers don't talk at all. It's going to give away where they are. They don't do that. I mean, I shouldn't say they don't talk at all, but they certainly don't never shut their goddamn mouths. This is horrible. Why would they do this? And then it came to the understanding of, oh, this is an actual voice acting. This is just a poorly written script. (laughs) Way to make your game look terrible through one stupid decision that I cannot believe made made it through a committee of people. But I guess, you know, voice actors got to get paid, so they're sure as hell not going to say anything, right? (laughs) Oh, boy. So anyway... Oh, that's actually the only other thing I mentioned was for honor because I just I didn't care about the rest. It's I I don't know I don't I don't you know what I don't even want to talk about it because it just it didn't look good. It was a scripted, uh, it was one of those fake. Oh, that this is live gameplay. No, it wasn't. It absolutely fucking wasn't. Don't bullshit us. We can tell. Same thing here. And the problem is that the, if you can't make a scripted version of your game look good your game is not good (laughs) and that's all i can say about for honor at the moment moving forward sony that orchestra was godlike amazing now it helps quite a bit that i had just recently stumbled upon a uh a live recording of one of blade uh i'm sorry i just almost said blade uh of bloodborne's soundtrack a live like uh, the live studio recording of it originally and then a live performance of it by i think like a swedish orchestra and not the same song different songs and that shit was amazing to see live it was fantastic and then you have this orchestra come out playing this haunting god of war stuff and it's just like oh my god this is amazing granted it, uh, it dragged on for a little bit longer than it should have. I think if I remember correctly, it was about a five minute performance. And so when you have a video game conference, five minutes of not video games is a bit of a problem. I think they should have planned that better so that like something is happening. Something is being led to while this orchestra is playing. Something on the screen is being displayed and, um, not necessarily revealed like you shouldn't you know end it by showing god of war 4 on the screen when obviously the reveal of kratos was supposed to be a surprise and was supposed to get that audience reaction that it got um not saying it should be like that but there definitely should have been for like you know the last minute and a half or two where it was finally starting to get to the point where it's like okay we get it cool music awesome orchestra we're here for the video games I'm not going to hate on this music. I love me some classical music. I actually uh, just recently bought the um, the soundtrack to Eternal Sonata because I was looking for it and I couldn't find it anywhere. And finally I found it on Amazon with the Japanese title. And it was $39, I want to say. And I'm just sitting there like, I'm not going to buy a goddamn soundtrack for $39. Are you insane? Yeah, do you mind? And then I found a track list and it's like four discs with 30 songs on each disc. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. I'm buying that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I'm about that shit. Um, so I love me some classical music, and even so, even with myself, where I'm not sitting there like, man, I don't care about this shit. Move it along. I was still kind of like, all right, we get the point. Cool music, awesome orchestra. Show us some goddamn games, please. <laughs> but then they did, and it was God of War four, and the crowd went goddamn nuts. Um, but anyway, so let me see. Last Guardian. At least it got a release date, I guess. Like, I'm, I don't... I don't know. I am not hyped for it at all in any way, shape, or form anymore. It's been too long. There have been too many clear flaws in the development process for me to be like, yo, this game has from a legendary director who has a legendary catalog of games, thus it's going to be legendary. Uh-uh. It scares the shit out of me. And I think... It's either going to be the best game ever or the worst game ever, and there will not be a middle ground. But after all this time, all this hype associated with it, I I don't know. I think it's going to be problematic. But we'll see. It, just, it kills me just that, again, Last Guardian, again, getting E3 time in opposition to Persona 5 didn't get anything. Gravity Rush 2 didn't get anything. Gravity Rush Remastered was an awesome goddamn game. I shouldn't say was an awesome game. I have not beaten it yet. I have too many games to play, 
but I'm loving me some Gravity Rush. And it just, it feels like they played it too safe. They knew exactly what would bring in the hype. And so they didn't, you know, even though they have so many exclusives coming out, they're anime, right? We can't be talking about Tales. We can't be talking about Persona. We can't be talking about Gravity Rush. These are anime games, man. People are, gamers are too judgmental of that weeaboo shit. We gotta show Call of Duty. Great. Great use of your exclusive presentation time to show a game that is not exclusive to your platform. Brilliant plan, you assholes. <laughs> anyway, um, Horizon. Yo, y'all know how I feel about redheads. You know how I feel about some redheads. A redhead female badass lead in a uh, machine-controlled world where you get to fight those machines and scavenge, build traps and shit. Oh boy, I'm excited. But again, I feel like this is a game that could either be the best thing ever or it's going to suck. And there's not going to be much of a middle ground. Obviously, I am hoping for it to be the most amazing thing ever. And we will see. I'm hyped for it. It looks really good. And I hope it ends up being amazing. Uh, so next up was the VR. They were showing off the virtue of the PlayStation Virtual Reality. And I didn't. I should have written down specifics. But apparently I didn't because I'm a dumbass that does not plan ahead. But they were showing off some really cool looking... Oh, Resident Evil 7 was the first thing they showed off. You want to talk about putting up an appropriate atmosphere. Holy shit, was that a proper creepy vibe coming from Resident Evil 7. Some people are going to shit themselves playing that on virtual reality. I guarantee it. I goddamn guarantee it. Some people are going to freak the fuck out playing that on virtual reality. Um, so they really, like, they came out swinging. All their virtual reality showcase stuff looked awesome. And then Final Fantasy XV came on. And it looked like the most pitiful, boring thing ever. Not the game itself, just the virtual reality portion. And it's just like, why did they even do this? If it's not even going to look good, why would you associate time with it? Why would you hype it up? Like, somebody, multiple people had to look at this and be like, yep, this is definitely an appropriate showcase in this new technology that we want people to purchase on day one let's show them this boring bullshit because it has the final fantasy name on it three like three people clapped afterwards like this was people lost their shit over resident evil 7 announcement people lost their shit across various other th you know, things that were happening then the final fantasy showcase ended it ended the display of everything and it was damn near silent that being said sydney I'll see her in some virtual reality. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. I'll see her in some virtual reality. God damn. Even though apparently uh, America localization changed her name to Sid uh, Cindy. I still wanted to say Sydney. Changed her name to Cindy. Change that shit back. You motherfuckers. This is a Final Fantasy game. A Final Fantasy game needs its fucking Sid. Her name is Sydney. If they don't change that shit. You hear me right now. You hear me right now, Square Enix. Everybody in the world, you 17 people that are gonna actually listen this far. Y'all motherfuckers, hear me now. I'm not buying that game if they don't change her name back to Sydney. Why the fuck would you change to Cindy in the first place? Sydney is a significantly better name than Cindy in the first place. I apologize if there's the one female out there that actually listens to me and your name is Cindy. Cindy. I keep trying to say Sydney. Why? Like, why would you? Why? 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 It's so stupid. It has nothing to do with E3, but I don't care. It's so stupid. Sydney or Bust. You ain't getting my money, motherfuckers. Is her name worth $60 to you? Bitch. That's what I'm saying. Right, anyway. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. Yo, that dude walking out with Crash Bandicoot's shadow behind him, that was some fantastic shit. Welcome to Skylanders. Crowd died. <laughs> Everybody was losing their shit when they saw some Crash Bandicoot. Hey man, he's gonna be in New Skylanders. <sighs> Silence. Crickets. Amazing. That and the Final Fantasy 15 thing, like amazing to watch, but obvious low points for their presentation. Like, crashed and burned as hard as somebody could in their presentation. It just, it was not a good look. Um, and then following that, the goddamn Star Wars theme. What was it even? Oh, Lego Star Wars. Who even gives a shit about that? 
but um not to discount people that enjoy the lego games but it's still it's again like this isn't even a playstation exclusive this isn't something that's like brand new or amazing to people you're just trying to play off the popularity of star wars rather than you know play up these legitimately interesting exclusives you have going for you and so that irks me on a certain level um but I just wrote down, every fucking time I hear the Star Wars theme, I still hope for not MMO Knights of the Old Republic. But it's never going to happen. Sad face. And then came Kojima's little thing, which again, like, there's nothing really to talk about. Like, oh shit, Hideo Kojima, he's amazing. I've never really liked Metal Gear Solid. What can I say? Like, it's never really been a series that's drawn me in. The story is weird as shit. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if he's got the developer chops or if people are going to, you know, if he's going to turn into Kaiji Inafuni with his wonderful mighty number nine. That game's looking good. Hope all y'all who backed it on Kickstarter are feeling good right now because it, it's... Whew. All right, let's just move on. Spider-Man from Insomniac Games? We might actually get a good Spider-Man game. You believe that we might actually get a good superhero game i don't even need to say spider-man we might actually get a good superhero game i think the lego game of avengers is the best superhero game we have at the no batman arkham asylum the arkham series was pretty damn good had some low points but arkham asylum itself was goddamn amazing uh arkham what was the one that followed it was arkham city the one that followed it i can't even remember whatever the second one was was not very good third one was pretty damn good fourth one was eh. anyway but it'd be nice to get like to have these superhero games treated with the same respect that the movies are generally being given right now and the same level of quality and i think insomniac games is a good chance to see that happen with spider-man so we'll see how it goes uh so the last thing that killed me after sony's you know sony went off um their presentation ended but they still show for some reason they still showed over the stream the like final message to the people in the audit physically in the auditorium uh they got like gift bags and they listed out what was in the gift bags i lost my shit when it got to the very final point 2014 teenage mutant ninja turtles movie dvd lost my fucking mind how you gonna give the people that in the gift bag that's just mean that's just fucked up. <laughs> that is such a shitty movie. Like, they can't get rid of it. And now, like, I wonder how many trash cans were full of that shit by the end of the night. <laughs> Woo! That killed me. Oh, I forgot to mention one other thing. So, my, I made a little tweet about it. Um, during the Microsoft showing, when they're showing off Dead Rising 4, I want to say it was because... They didn't want people to be able to easily see the cell phone screen that said, you know, like, oh, this is Frank West. They wanted the actual reveal of it being Frank West to be a bit of more of a surprise than the trailer actually let it be. Because, like, within the first five seconds, you're shown a phone that says Frank West deliberately on the top. But it bugged the living hell out of me because for the first, you know, like, 30 seconds of the trailer, the stream isn't focusing on the screen it's showing this like half crowd half screenshot where you can't actually make out any specific details i can't really see what's going on on this on the trailer and so it's like i'm here to be hyped by these trailers show me the fucking trailer you son of a bitch that irked me to hell and it's the same thing where like there was numerous other things throughout everybody's presentation where you missed it because they tried to cut to the crowd to show the crowd's live reaction to be like oh hey look the crowd's totally into this except numerous times the crowd was absolutely not into it at all and was completely silent and just staring and watching and like nobody was clapping nobody was cheering nothing good was happening and in those moments it like it cut to the audience and you saw like the exact amount of time it took for you to realize this crowd was not reacting in any way shape or form was exactly how long it took for the person in control of the cameras to tell that because that was immediately the moment that they switched away from that uh camera angle but still like it's just you know it's the same thing you got to focus on the games we're here for the games focus on the games don't try to do any kind of shenanigans don't try to pull any like i said super bowl commercialish bullshit ubisoft focus on your games your games should speak for themselves and they should be what hypes people up not some random celebrity cameo not some you know i don't know 
false looking scripted gameplay segment your games should be able to speak for their own quality and if they can't they should not be there pure and simple um anyway i have gone on for long enough thank you for listening i am out peace